Welcome to my mini lecture series on chemical anatomy and today's topic is phase change of an in-depth review of its lower motor neuron lesion. Now let us see the anatomy of the phase change now. I am doing the later view of the brain stem. This is the midbrain, this is the pons, this is the medulla. Okay. So this is the whole of the brain stem which is contained as a spinal cord this is the posterior lying cerebellum and this is the fourth ventricle the fascia nerve emerges from a motor nucleus of fascia nerve which is lying in the lower part of the pons and the fibers of this there is the brachiomotor fibers of the fascia nerve which emerges from this nucleus arches backwards around a nucleus of the sixth cranial nerve that is the abducens nerve and then emerges from the pontomedullary junction later part of pontomedullary junction on the ventral aspect of the brain stem or you can say it is that place also known as pontocerebellar angle because it is closely related to the cerebellum the spontomedullary junction is closely related to the cerebellum okay this is the brachial motor fibers there are other fibers also this is the brachial motor fibers which supply the muscles of the face but we know that fascia nerve also supplies other part of the body also so first we have to see this is these are the these are the brachial motor fibers which supply the muscles of facial expression and other muscles of the body the facial nerve also supplies the lacrimatory gland and also the submandibular and the sublingual gland it gives parasympathetic motor fibers so where does they arise they arise from another nucleus which is lying just below this nucleus also lying in the lower part of the pons which is known as superior salivary nucleus or it is also known as lacrimatory nucleus so from this nucleus arises the parasympathetic fibers which is supplied the lacrimal the submandibular and the sublingual glands the facial nerve also gives a branch which is known as cauda tympani nerve which supplies the taste sensation of the anterior to third of the tongue okay and all the taste sensation which comes from the arises from the tongue goes to a nucleus which is known as nucleus tractus solitarius and it is present in the lower part of the pons and upper part of the medulla so this is the location of the nucleus tractus solitarius from this nucleus arises the or goes the fibers of taste sensation okay next we also know that the facial nerve supplies or carries the pain touch and temperature sensation from the part of a external ear and we all know that all the sensation of the head and neck is pain and touch goes to a nucleus which is present in the rostral part of the brain stem which is known as the trigeminal nucleus or to be more specific into the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nucleus which is located on the rostral side of the brain stem this whole nucleus is located in the rostral side of the brain stem so this is a mesencephalic nucleus of the trigeminal nucleus this is the pontine nucleus of trigeminal nucleus and this is the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nucleus from here arises the pain and touch sensations of the fascia together the parasympathetic motor fibers the fibers of the taste sensation 
and the fibers or the pain and touch sensation on the external ear comprises what is known as nervous intermedius. Okay, and the remaining the brachiomotor fibers will comprise the motor root of facial nerve. But this is a misnomer, this nervous interest, because this is known as also, if this is a motor nerve root, this is also known as the sensory root. But this is misnomer because, because we can see there is a motor fiber, that is parasympathetic motor fibers, it also carries the parasympathetic fibers. So it is a misnomer. Let us see the further extent of this facial nerve. The facial nerve, when exiting from the ventral aspect of the brain stem, when enter into a canal which is known as internal auditory canal and will enter into the internal ear. Okay. In the internal ear, it will go through the internal ear, it will go into the middle ear cavity by taking a sharp bend on the lateral wall or on the medial wall of the middle ear cavity. So let us see if this is the medial wall of the medial ear cavity. It will take a sharp turn on the medial wall, come on to the posterior wall of the middial ear cavity. This sharp turn is known as external genu of facial nerve. So where is the internal genu? Internal genu was this, where it curves around the abducens necklace. Okay. In this in external genu lies a ganglia, which is known as the geniculate ganglia. From this, a nerve arises, which is known as the greater petrosal nerve, which pierces the roof of the middle ear cavity, joins with another nerve, that is the petrosal nerve, to form a nerve which is known as nerve to pterygoid canal. And this nerve to pterygoid canal is supply or relay in the Tergopeltan ganglia, which lies in the Tergopeltan fossa. And this ganglia will supply the lacrimal gland through the branches of the maxillary nerve. After coming onto the posterior wall of the middle ear cavity, the facial nerve courses the vertical course. And during this vertical course, it will give a branch to a muscle in the middle ear cavity. That muscle is known as tapedius muscle, which normally function to damp to dampen out the oscillations of the tapes uh, ossicle. The facial nerve will exit from a foramen which is known as stylomastoid foramen in the floor of the middle ear cavity. But before exiting from this foramen, it will give a branch just 6 mm above the stylomastoid foramen and this branch will then go on to the medial lateral wall of the middle ear cavity which is the tympanic membrane, goes through the layers of the tympanic membrane and will come out of the middle ear cavity from the junction of the mid lateral wall and the anterior wall through a fissure which is known as pterygopanic fissure pterygo tympanic fissure this branch is known as quadra tympani nerve and will join the lingual nerve which is a branch from the mandibular nerve and will supply the taste sensation of the anterior two third of the tongue. Taste sensation of the anterior two third of the tongue. Also, an important ganglia. It will relate to an important ganglia, submandibular ganglia, submandibular ganglia. And through this ganglia, it will supply very two important salivary glands sublingual and the submandibular gland sublingual and the sub
sub mandibular gland okay after exiting from the stylomastoid foramen it will give a sensory branch to the external ear which will supply the conchal part of the external ear after giving the sensory branch the patient nerve will enter into the substance of the parotid gland divide into five branches and supply the muscles of the face supply the muscles of the face so this is the whole course of the patient nerve now let us see at which point the lower motor neuron region of patient nerve can occur at this point in the lower part of the pons where the nucleus of the facial nerve lies there could be any vascular lesion which could lead to any lesion of this nucleus that would present with features of loss of lacrimation taste sensation from anterior to third with tongue loss of salivation from the sub mandibular and sublingual gland hyperacusis because due to the paralysis of the stapedius muscle pain and loss of pain in temperature from the part of external ear and with the facial muscle paralysis okay there is one syndrome which is known as millard gobler syndrome millard gobler syndrome where there could be any vascular lesion in the lower part or the ventral part of the pons here so here lies lesion what it will manifest as it will manifest as all the features of lower motor neuron lesion of facial nerve apart from that it will present with contralateral hemiplegia because in this region of the pons lies the pyramidal tracts or the fibers of corticospinal tract so here lies the fibers of corticospinal tract okay and they supply the body body muscles so they of the opposite side so there will be very contralateral hemiplegia apart from lower motor nerve lesion of the facial nerve because the facial nerve is coursing through this lower part of the pons so these are the features of miller gobler syndrome that is lower motor nerve lesion of facial nerve along with contralateral hemiplegia next point of injury could be when it enters in the internal acoustic meatus one important fact to remember is that when enters into the internal acoustic meatus there lies another nerve which also goes into the internal acoustic meatus that is the eighth canal nerve vestibulo cochlear nerve so whenever there is an injury at this level this nerve the vestibulo cochlear nerve can also get injured and cause deafness okay along with the lower motor neuron lesion features of the facial nerve another site of injury of the facial nerve could be at the region of the external gen here when such condition occurs there occurs a syndrome known as crocodile tear syndrome Okay. Now let us first see what will happen if there is an injury at this level. There would be loss of lacrimation, hyperacusis, loss of anterior two third and taste sensation of anterior two third of tongue, loss of salivation from sublingual and submandibular gland, loss of pain and temperature from external ear, part of external ear, and loss of or the paralysis of facial muscles. After some days, 
there will be regeneration of nerve fibers. That these uh, salivary fibers is passing through these the vertical course, and the lacrimatory fibers will go to the greater petrosal nerve. But when regeneration occurs after an injury at this level, some fibers of the salivary which has to go this side can regenerate along this side. That is to the greater petrosal nerve, and it will produce some communications with the greater petrosal nerve. This could lead to any stimulus which causes salivation like it can also activate the lacrimal gland also because the fibers has caused into the lacrimatory gland okay so during eating there will be tears coming out from this this happens in an animal which is known as crocodile therefore this syndrome is known as crocodile tear syndrome okay next set of injury could be between the external genu and the nerve to stapedius here if there is any injury at this level then it lead to hyperacusis because of paralysis of stapedius muscle there could be loss of taste sensation from the anterior two third of the tongue there will be loss of salivation in the sublingual and the submandibular gland loss of pain and touch temperature from the part of the external ear and the loss of facial muscles the paralysis of the facial muscles okay next very important site of injury could be at the level of just after it is coming out from the stylomastoid foramen here any injury at this level will lead to loss of sensation in the external ear as well as facial muscle paralysis there could be another site of lesion also after it has given the branch of the to the external ear here just before it is piercing the parotid gland okay at this site there will be only loss of facial muscles only paralysis of the facial muscles no associated function loss okay so in total we can divide the site of lesion into two parts a nuclear paralysis and an infranuclear paralysis okay this infranuclear paralysis of the facial nerve is known as what the condition bell's palsy okay so in bell palsy there is injury to the peripheral part of the facial nerve at different levels and which could be associated with some function loss as well as the feature of facial muscle paralysis or we can say the features of lower motor neuron injury of facial nerve along with associated function losses and it all depends upon the site of the lesion here when the patient have got injured after exiting from the stylomastoid foramen it will lead to a particular type of bell palsy in which there is only loss of facial muscle that is only paralysis of facial nerve muscle and no associated function loss okay now i think you have learned a great detail about the patient of anatomy as well as in depth review of lower motor neuron lesion of facial nerve